Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and I am your host of Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers that have joined me and this awesome rainbow tribe that we have. You guys are some very powerful people and thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, but the people here on this YouTube channel are, channel are very encouraging. You know, those that are not usually get blocked. So you guys already know, we, we know the, the rules here. Uh, but I wanted to, um, this video, I wanted to talk about cognitive dissonance. And I did a video before, but I wanted to go back and re revisit it because of, uh, I think it was one of the comments that was made. I think I was being rebuked. I think I was being chastised. Uh, but <clears throat> cognitive dissonance, denial, Stockholm syndrome, I wanted to talk about those. Um, and so I wanted to address, uh, you know, one of the viewers that kind of chastised me for being insensitive toward narcissist and that the fact that um, narcissists uh, have been wounded, abandoned and rejected and how can, you know, how can you make a decision to leave and be like everybody else and you need to stay and support them. Obviously you haven't been through enough. You haven't reached your boiling point and, and said enough is enough yet. You haven't been abused enough for you to finally say enough is enough. And number two, I think also what you were saying was um, that um, I needed to teach coping skills on how to stay because you want to stay in the relationship and I need to help teach coping skills um, to help you to uh, cope in the relationship. First of all, I am a trauma professional. My choice is to be a domestic violence advocate and to help those that have been traumatized. I have witnessed people that have been sexually molested brutally from the age of birth until they were teenagers. I have witnessed um, sexual abuse, even male, male, female, female, I know of the stories of a father uh, killing a mother in front of her young children and hacking her in pieces in front of them. I know of the story of the man pushing his wife over the balcony, I think stabbing her or shooting her, pushing her over her balcony, over the balcony in front of her young children. I know of people committing suicide before we had an opportunity to get to them. And then the after effects of um, uh, people that were close to the individual and, and their reaction or their uh, trauma around that. I have witnessed fathers uh, and mothers who have lost their children to a narcissist and the children are being abused brutally. I have witnessed too much for me to help you stay in a domestic violent relationship. When, when I read that and put on my interpretation glasses, uh, my understanding was that you want me to help you stay in a domestic violent situation so that you can cope and continue being abused. I can't do that. that that's not why I'm here. So I, that's the wrong channel for you. You need to go find another channel that's going to help you change the narcissist and help you stay in a relationship. You haven't been through enough yet for you to finally say, uh, bye boy. And so that's not what I'm here for. So this is why I wanted to address this issue because um, cognitive dissonance, which is a psychological term for uh, an individual struggling and the, the discomfort of having two conflicting um, opinions. One opinion or one thought is the fact that you're being abused and you're witnessing and you have, it's, excuse me, is right in front of your face and you know what this individual is doing. You know that they're abusing your kids. You know that they're abusing you. You know that you're being tormented humiliated and embarrassed, whatever it is, isolated, uh, physically abused, sexually abused, coerced, intimidated, whatever, bullied. You know this on one hand. On the other hand is, but I love him or I love her and I can't leave. And we built this life together and we have children together. And what about the children? And so you have this conflicting opinion, you know, the facts versus your emotions. And on the inside, you have this internal conflict going on. And so with that internal internal conflict, for an individual to come out and start poking at the sore spot or pointing at or highlighting the truth, 
it's the conflict you have on the inside and you're wrestling with it on the inside that most people who have been trauma bonded, in other terms, Stockholm syndrome, meaning that you have um, become so enmeshed with your tormentor that you're willing to fight on their behalf. You're willing, anytime someone highlights the truth about something, instead of you recognizing it, you're in denial and you're attack the person that's bringing out the truth. I can accept that. Not a big deal because that's that's why I make the videos. You know, everybody is not in the same place as everybody that's on the YouTube channel. There are some people that are in denial. I had one subscriber say, you know, I was in denial. I knew the truth. So she was going through cognitive dissonance. I knew the truth. But every time you came on the video, I just couldn't handle the truth. And so I stayed away for a long time because I was in denial. But she says she returned. So I'm thankful she returned and she finally accepted this is what's going on. Because you have to remember that a narcissist, it doesn't matter what they have done or how good they have been to you, or I've seen the good in them and I've seen what they can and can do. Everything that they do has an arterial motive. Everything that they do is all about them. It has nothing to do with you. So the things that they do is all about, is one-sided. It's a one-sided relationship. The biggest struggle that most people have is that I can't believe the relationship wasn't real. I did a video on that. I can't believe the relationship isn't real. You don't you don't stay with an individual this many years and do this. And, and I know because the things that they said, because you're into your emotions. And so if you step back from your emotions and look at it logically, you know, that's that's cognitive dissonance. Look at it logically. Look at the facts. Look what you if it like military, we said if it walks like a duck, it looks like a duck, smells like a duck, sounds like a duck, well, quacks like a duck. It's a duck. That is a duck. You can be all technical if you want to. Well, that's a Canadian geese. That's Canadian goose. You know, that's a you know, that's a duck. You know, regardless, that's a duck. Looks like a duck has feathers like a duck. That's the picture that we see that look like a duck. So that obviously is a duck, you know? And so a lot of times people struggle with cognitive dissonance. The Stockholm syndrome, as I said, is, is, is another term for like trauma bonding. They trauma bond you. And so they literally get your um, devotion. They, 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 they mess you with them where you fight for them, knowing that when you go home, you're traumatized. You'll cover up on their behalf because you have, it's the fear of if I leave, see the cognitive dissonance, if I leave, where am I gonna go? If I leave, he or she's gonna do this. If I leave, they have you bonded, like they have you fearful like that. I can't sustain myself. I can't do anything to help myself. I don't have a job. That's why they did it. That's why they made sure you never had finances. Um, there's um, a, I really like this lady too. Her name is, um, Christine, you probably have heard of her, Christine Louis, Louise D. Cannonville. And um, she has, if you go to her site, she's uh, narcissisticbehavior.net. And she also has an ebook out, but I really like her. I like reading a lot of things that she writes because it really makes a lot of sense. And here she was saying, understanding cognitive dissonance in relation to narcissist abuse. And she said the same thing. Stockholm syndrome involves a victim paradoxically forming a positive relationship with their oppressor. It's called trauma bonding. That's, that's the term you kind of go back and forth. When victims of narcissists, narcissists, when victims of narcissistic are suffering from Stockholm syndrome, they are often seen by outsider as someone, as somehow having participate in some bizarre way that seems to support their abuse. However, to understand how trauma bonding occurs, it is especially relevant to understand what is involved in the decision-making and problem-solving process of the victim. The theory is known as cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, which I just said a minute ago, is a term, psychological term, that, that describes the uncomfortable tension that results from having two conflicting thoughts at the same time. Um, or from engaging in behavior that conflicts with one's belief. And so to uh, argue or to, you know, um, to protect that narcissist, yet on the other hand, the conflict is, but I know what they're doing, but I love them and I'm going to cover and I'm going to make sure that no one knows because I'm going to work. See, a lot of people are in to save, save the narcissist. You can't save anybody that doesn't want to be saved. A narcissist does not have the capacity to look within. They don't want to look within because you're the problem. They're not the problem. And so it doesn't matter what you bring. That's why they don't last very long in counseling. Majority of, well, I'm not going to say majority. Every single person that I've ever had counseling sessions with, 
that I that I realize that I'm dealing with something other than post-traumatic stress or borderline personality, when I, when I realize, okay, this individual has all the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder, they normally didn't last very long. Number one, because they couldn't cross my boundaries and they couldn't get me to worship the ground that they walked on because the whole session pertained to them, me, how wonderful I am, all the things that I've done and all the things, especially uh, when I have couples that come in once I determine, and this is something that's taught in the academic, uh, uh, on academic levels in college setting, when you're learning the master's level, when you're learning counseling, or you have a counseling, you're trying to get a counseling degree to be a counselor, they tell you that if you have um, a couple that comes in um, and you realize that there's domestic violence, it is highly recommended you do not continue counseling with them because everything that you say will be used against one or the other. And a lot of times they're traumatized even more and they're not going to be honest with you to tell you what's really happening in that, you know, in, in the relationship, because as soon as they walk out of your office or if you, you know, address the behavior by, you know, by the abuser, nine times out of 10, the um, victim um, will be abused again, will be tormented again. I've witnessed it over and over again where I realized I can't, you know, I will not continue counseling. You need to go to anger management. And I knew it was more than just anger management. You need to go to anger management and you need some type of um, domestic violence support group and education on your situation. And so, um, so that's that cognitive dissonance that I'm talking about, you know, when, when you're struggling between the two. Uh, but, but, um, so let me go. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's look here. Um, let's look. So let's see. So most victims, she said, most victims living in a household where there's narcissistic abuse are living in a torturous war zone. A lot of you on here have said that you live in a torturous war zone where you're being tormented your kids are being tormented you're being abused you're being misused and a lot of times with those covert narcissists this is what's going on in the home and nobody knows what's going on but you're the crazy one you're the one that doesn't have it all together you're the one that has mental health issues because they're always going to point the finger back at you you're the one who causes me to be this way if you weren't like this or if you didn't do this or if you wouldn't always do this then i wouldn't respond to you this way i wouldn't react this way it's because of you no the everyone is responsible for their own reaction and their own responses. Everyone is responsible for their own behavior. A narcissist will not take responsibility or accountability of their behaviors. Uh, if they do, there's a reason behind it. There's always an arterial motive. What purpose does it serve if I agree or do this or treat you this way? If they treat you well, if, if uh, you know, they treat you like they love you, that, that's that trauma bonding, that love bonding, that trauma bonding is I'm going to soothe that pain and I'm going to condition it, I'm going I'm to rub it, you know, put some, some healing balm on that, and then I'm going to torment you again. So it's that it's back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down, where you just literally just connected. You've been traumatized to this individual. You are now addicted to that drug called the narcissist uh, and that behavior. Um, but most people are living in, in, you know, those that are victims of narcissistic abuse or recovered from it or, or, uh, or survivors of it. You knew that you were living in a torturous war zone where all forms of power and control are used against, against you. Intimidation, emotional, physical, mental abuse, isolation, economic abuse, sexual abuse, coercion. Um, there are even women that, that said that, um, their abuser, would try to torture their kids to force them to do, excuse me, to do what it is they wanted them to do. And so in order to protect the children, the, um, the women would uh, comply uh, to whatever the demands were of the tormentor. And then when they comply, the very first thing that, they, that the, the narcissist said to them was, you're a sorry mother. Uh, because if you put your children in harm's way, you're a sorry mother. Look at you. You're a sorry mother. You would even put your children in harm's way. So they know what they're doing. Let's see. Your, uh, another thing that she was saying in here, where is it at? Um, that uh, the environment puts a victim in a dependency situation. So you're almost, you're codependent, but you're dependent on that narcissist, especially if they're taking away your, um, your finances, or if you decided to give up your dreams and your plans, and you decided to be that housewife or that house husband, you know, um, and, and support their dreams and, 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 you know, undergird them as they're getting their education and doing, they, they did that for a reason, because once they get to where they're going, because they need you to do that, you know, then a lot of you have been discarded and then you have nothing 
nothing. You have nothing under your belt. You have no education. You have no job. You have nothing. Everything belonged to them. And watch it because a lot of times they'll also put property in their names. You are signing with them, but the property or homes or cars, everything is primarily in their name. So you can't get it or their name alone. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Um, a lot of you have experienced extreme helplessness which throws you in a panic and chaos. That's where that post-traumatic stress develops from. You know, being in an environment like that, it's like being on a war zone. And like the, the soldiers that are returning from a war zone, you guys are in a war zone, so why wouldn't you have complex post-traumatic stress disorder or peak just regular, well, it's not regular, but post-traumatic stress and complex post-traumatic stress. Did a video on, video on that too. Um, but at the same time, you're living on eggshells. You, you're walking on eggshells. You're living in a anxiety ridden environment where you never know what's going to happen. You don't know whether they're going to come in the house angry. You don't know if they're going to be agitated. You don't know if you're going to be abused. Someone has insulted them or, you know, it wasn't even an insult. It may have been, you know, something that they didn't like about the product of their work. They may have been, you know, reprimanded for something, but you catch the flood. You catch. So a lot of times what, what a victim will do, um, well, they will, you know, uh, they live their life making sure that you don't offend the narcissist so majority of the time well don't say that you know well, don't do that you know that's gonna make him or make her angry you know well no 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 I don't want anybody over because you're embarrassed you know what's going on you're trying to cover because you're shame and they use shame against you and so a lot of times a lot of victims will will cover uh, and 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 they really come after you stop doing that that upsets him because you know the aftermath and you know what's gonna happen when you get home it doesn't matter at job who made him mad or who made her mad at work or who didn't compliment her or who didn't do that when they're angry it's like the full fury of their anger is on you as if you did it uh, let's see and a lot of times and it says here she says it too that in order to survive the victim has to find ways of reducing their cognitive dissonance. Remember, it's that internal struggle. So you're fighting on the inside, knowing right from wrong, and you know what you're experiencing, but you're trying, you're, you're, you're struck. So it's an internal conflict on the inside of you, and you're very uncomfortable. And you feel uncomfortable when people point it out or highlight it or talk about it. Um, and what happens is the strategy becomes uh, justifying. So you'll justify their behavior. Well, you know she was abused when she was a child. Well, you know that he was neglected and rejected. Well, you know he's a foster child or you know that he didn't have a good upbringing or she you know her mother did this to her or her father molested her and just because this stuff happens doesn't mean that they are entitled to abuse you too you know it doesn't mean so you begin to justify why you're staying justify and protect them because you know don't treat them like that miss karma don't talk to talk about them like that that is so insensitive okay you haven't reached your boiling point. You haven't reached your point with a lot of people where either you're gonna kill him or her, or she's gonna kill you, or 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 yeah, you. There you go. So it becomes one of those, you know, uh, uh, survive survival. Uh, either I'm gonna get out because I'm gonna hurt you, or you're gonna hurt me, or you're gonna hurt my children, or vice versa. You know, you're gonna kill me, or I'm gonna kill you. And and I've had enough, or you've gotten to a point where you know. This is, I can't do this anymore. I, I've lost everything. I've lost my home. I've lost myself. I've lost my beauty. I've lost my clothes. I've lost my job. I don't have any money. So you haven't reached that boiling point. You, some women have lost an eye, have been burnt, uh, has, have lost their health. You know, <laughs> y'all, this is a serious, this is domestic violence. This is domestic violence. I don't help people stay in domestic violence. That's not what I do. You know, and so I wanted to make sure that you understand what some of you are struggling with, you know, but I can't believe because you're struggling internally. It's a fight on the inside. And majority of the time you're in denial. So you're trying to defend it. You know, one minute is I know what they do. Logically, I understand. And then the next minute is, but I love him or her or and there I've seen the good side. And so this is not something that's uncommon that I that I see. Uh, let's see. So these are defense mechanisms. And a lot of times they're even unconscious that you just do it out of habit. Uh, the victim is unaware of using them in the moment and uh, all they are in intent, all they are intent on is surviving the madness they find themselves in. And so that's why I encourage you guys to connect with a trauma professional, a trauma therapist. And I wanted to let you guys know there is a therapist for those of you that are in California. Um, this lady is a licensed clinical social worker. If you go to Good Therapy, look up Andrea Schneider. Well, I'm German, so Schneider. But Andrea Schneider, 
She's a licensed clinical social worker and a psychotherapist. She also does trauma work and EMDR, and she's in Pleasant Hill, California. I think she said that she was moving her office to the Bay Area, but if you look on Good Therapy, there's also a link. You can email her, and there's a link to her office. And she has a she has her she has podcasts and she also has a site which is www.andreaschneiderlcsw.com. Go check her out. For those of you that are uh, in different areas, you know this right here goes to show that when you're struggling like that, and when you're triggered, when people start telling the truth and highlighting, you know, and it makes you feel uncomfortable, and and you're de in denial, and you're in defense, you're defending the individual, and you're fighting, you know. Uh, but 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 I see, you know, and and you're justifying the behavior. It's time for you to go and talk to a trauma professional. A lot of you guys, you know, can't get out. You don't know where to go. You can't find one in your local area. If you go, there's a link underneath my YouTube channel, and it is uh, a sponsored link for me, and it's betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. You can vet counselors, trauma, you know, look for trauma professionals. Trauma professionals, those that specialize in post-traumatic stress, parental alienation, severe psychological abuse, and then ask them if they understand, you know, you can talk to them and ask them. I think the first week is free. It's a very nominal fee. If you're going through financial problems, they also give you a discounted rate, but at least you have a counselor you can talk to via Skype, online, I think telephonically, and you know, you get to talk to them in the comfort of your own home or the privacy of your office. No one is gonna know, it is private. No one has to know, but it's a low fee. You know, for those of you that can't afford coaching, but you can, you know, you can, I mean, a lot of times you guys are registered to different sites that they charge you every month to be on, but this is an investment in your healing. This is an investment of getting you free of the torment that you have been in and then the residue that is in your mind and in your heart. You got to get rid of the residue and you have to heal. Some of you are so hurt and so bitter that you don't ever want to be in another relationship. But think about it. You could be a perfect fit for someone and you've been in a relationship where you think that they've ruined you. But now someone who deserves someone like you you know, is not getting the chance to meet you because you've totally cut people off. I'm not saying jump right back into a relationship. What I'm saying is go through your healing process because a lot of times when you're in a position like that, I don't want to date anybody. I want to, no, because you're in a healing process, but it's good to have a mentor, to have a coach or have a counselor, especially a counselor involved in your life to help you through that process of healing. Somebody deserves someone like you, you know, and I don't mean the trauma part, uh, but someone deserves someone like you. Someone, someone really is a good fit for you and you are a good fit for them. Don't let these experiences, because we have been connected to people that had narcissistic personality disorder or were toxic or maybe didn't have narcissism and were just abusive and we were connected to these individuals and our self-esteem was affected our self-worth was affected you know and and the kids you know children are too young to really understand and you know like we you know you give information and we can kind of register that information so imagine what they go through because the narcissist trauma bonds them ghost them you know, say one thing, you know, I love you and then don't show up or don't give them a gift or, you know, everything that they say is totally opposite than what they do. And you have these kids that love their parents, their hopes are high. So imagine what the cognitive dissonance is for a child. You know, if you are wounded like you are wounded and some of you are so deeply hurt, imagine a child, a little child or child, you know, is growing up and they feel rejected and abandoned. You know, they, they're hurt. You know, you don't love, they grow up that way. You know, some of you understand what I'm talking about because you were that child. So hopefully this has helped you. Thank you so much for all the comments. You know, those of you that have posted comments that are on a public forum and I address them on a public forum, I still thank you for doing it because it gives me a topic to, because somebody needed to see that. Somebody needed to hear that and I needed to address that with someone to get you out of this torment that you're in. And so hopefully this is helping you guys. You know, hopefully this is giving you information to make you free in your mind and make you free in your heart. It takes time. You know, you've never been in relationships like this before and some of you have coming from family history of, of narcissist abuse and torment and abuse, you know. So it takes time to discover who you are and how valuable you are and how somebody deserves somebody like you because you're good for someone. You just don't think that, you know. And a lot of you like, I'll never date again. You're somebody, you are somebody's, 
I'm not gonna say soulmate because you know that's what the what the, uh, what the uh, narcissists use. But you are perfect for someone. You're never gonna be perfect, but you are perfect for someone. Somebody deserves to know someone like you, and you deserve to know somebody like them. And so, hopefully, this has helped. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, overcoming narcissist abuse. And I also have to hit the bell so you know whenever I upload, I come on live on Sundays. Most Sundays, you know, unless I'm traveling, which I normally do on Sundays, but sometimes I make it back in time in order to come on live. And usually between eight and nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And then also I have two Facebook pages. One is my professional Facebook page, Psychological Health Consultants and Services. And the other one is my book, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And so if you haven't ordered my book, go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. It's Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection, Real Stories About Real People. You will find yourself in there. It is a Christian book. However, the Christian, um, I give Christian encouragement, biblical encouragement about who you are, your situation, and to encourage you. But you will find your story in here because these are real stories about people and how, um, you know, they were groomed and grew up with narcissism, didn't know, and how they connected with these toxic relationships and how they were thinking when they did it. <clears throat> like some people, you know, the cognitive dissonance, you know, that, that I got to stay, I have to do it right. And so some of them were professionals in high positions of authority. You know, how did I get involved with this? An educated person, you know, a person with children and how the children were abused, you know, what they were thinking and how they broke free and then how they had to go through a healing process. And so hopefully you guys support me by the book. I'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina um, on November uh, 26, 2019. I will be there. Please come join me. Go check out Miss Tierra Carpenter, CEO and founder of Project Identity Inc.org. Go check out her site. See what she's doing. Hit the events and you'll see the flyer um, where she's invited me as a, a speaker, as a guest speaker. Uh, I think I'm one of a few on the panel, um, but um, you'll see the link and you can click on the link. Nominal fee $25 for general admissions, $10 for students. So if you're a student, come on. And and if you guys can't come support her, I think I had um, um, someone ask if there's hotel arrangement. I am not the I am not the organizer. So you would have to contact Miss Tierra Carpenter to ask her those questions um, to see. I'm quite sure that she has you should probably I don't know if she's made hotel arrangements or not, but I'm quite sure that there are hotels around um, the area. And I'm really honored. Thank you so much for the individual that's coming from Georgia. I think it is. Thank you so much for wanting to come that far to come and hear what I have to say. Thank you so much. I'm so honored, but I'm not the coordinator of that. You would have to contact Miss Tierra Carpenter for the details. And if you can donate, look and see what she's doing to see, you know, it's important to donate. It's a young woman that's making a change in the community and helping. If we had her when we were young, I'm quite sure we wouldn't have went through half the stuff. And then she's gorgeous too. So you would have a self-esteem about yourself, make you feel good about yourself, you know, so please support her. Uh, and once again, also go down to my link. Those of you that have asked, PayPal and Cash App is on there for you to make donations. Thank you so, so much for those of you that have asked. Uh, and what else? Am I missing anything? I don't think I'm missing anything, am I? So you guys, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Go to my mentor's um, uh, YouTube channel. It's Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper. And she is the presiding prelate. She is my senior. Um, she is my mentor, but she's also the senior pastor of Intuit Chamber, Chambers Global Ministries. She's in London right now. So she is worldwide. She travels everywhere. Um, and so um, there might be a little delay in the videos when she, or her live feeds. But she gives you information from a biblical and spiritual perspective concerning uh, narcissist abuse. And so you guys go and re I'm not registered, but go and like her page. Uh, no, her YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button and make sure you hit the bell so you know whether, and whenever she uploads or comes on live so you can ask her questions as well. And once again, thank you guys so much for the support. You guys go and be great.